everything I'm hearing is this is not the Brexit that we voted for. That's everything that I'm hearing from you. And yet we warned you for three years straight that you would not get the Brexit you voted for. And clearly everything you've said today shows that you failed on that on that point. And the cost of that is that people in this country are poorer for it. I still hope there are people out there in the country that realise that what they wanted is not being delivered, it is still being blocked, and they will continue to have faith in this country as the best determinant for our future, not unelected bureaucrats in Berlamont. You're still spewing rhetoric from 2016, even though the majority of people think Brexit is a mistake. <laughs>
uh, non-tariff non-tariff barriers. In terms of the developing world, uh, the EU has a uh, what's it called? The everything but arms. Well, that's deal, tariffs. Deal, that's deal. not the non-tariff barriers. But yeah. you'd be talking about the tariffs. Uh, as, as, as for uh, yeah, so for getting rid of tariffs, you say stripping tariffs. Getting rid of tariffs makes it easier for those countries to sell to Europe. So it has an everything but arms trade deal. This is not true. So, so, actually. So, so, so it has an everything but arms arms trade deal uh, um, deal with with the EU. As for as for non-tariff barriers, we're talking about basically the EU being a place that regulates stuff. I have not on, on regulations on consumer safety, on data protection, the stuff that we want it to have. We want to have. We're, in fact, we're having to duplicate that stuff now, which is what is damaging our economy. That's the thing. You say that the EU churns out red tape. That was what we were sold in 2016. We have to get rid of all these laws on bananas and pillows and stuff like that. Whereas, in fact, we're always going to end up regulating these things ourselves. If we do it separately to the EU, then that means there's a barrier between us and the EU because the laws are different on either side. And that adds cost to business, that increases prices, that lowers quality of life. And right now, people across this country are su- are suffering. A one- half of low-income families skipping meals to feed their kids and but, Brexit but they're not, they're and, not and, suffering and, and, because of Brexit oh wow in fact, no so, in sorry. fact look taking so, taking so, the no, example no, 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 no. for instance let's look at the Brexit, HGV Brexit, has, Brexit, Brexit has raised food prices by 6% according to the Bank of England it, so as far, as far as are they suffering yes they are suffering is it because of Brexit yes it's because of Brexit but partly the poorest but, it, but it's society, all, but it, but, the very poorest in society and I take my own father as an example here had mm-hmm. real time wage compression to a phenomenal degree with the influx of EU migrant workers what is trapped a lot of the working classes and made that wealth gap so huge is cheap labor and this was driven massively by the influx of the eu accession states my father lived through it it's one of the reasons that i got interested in brexit and actually now if you look at the price that the salaries that hgv drivers can now command they have gone up since we left the eu so real-time wages for the lowest paid actually go up as a result of leaving the EU. Now, food prices have gone up. Part of that might be due to certain imports have been restricted due to weather conditions in North Africa, in Spain. Um, another part of that, as you know, is because of the war in Ukraine, putting up the price of oil, putting up the price of wheat. That's happened internationally. I do think Everything that we need to get... I think, no, 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 no. no. See, uh, this is what I started out with saying, but somehow it's, it's all Brexit's fault. No, no, no. I, it no, no, really but, is not. <laughs> it's the thing. I started off by saying nobody here, or nobody on my side of the argument is trying to blame everything on Brexit. Brexit. You are the one taking the extreme position of it's everything except Brexit. We are willing to accept that it's that it's Ukraine, that it's COVID, that it's that it's that it's weather. Everything is allowed to be infecting our economy except for the thing that we said but was going to make a actually, major difference to everybody. I haven't as, actually as, said as, that. As, as, you, 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 no, no, I didn't say it's everything except Brexit. But you, I certainly you, 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 did you, you, not you, say you list, that. You listed things and you refused to say Brexit. Is Brexit increasing food prices? There will be elements of Brexit which has an impact as we go through the is stage Brexit of transitioning to rolling out is our Brexit own trade deals. Food I think minimally, if you look at in so the Brexit context of, I think During if you look in, I think, I think, I think, I think if you look in the context of what's so, actually caused the most increases so, in food prices, like I said, it was a poor harvest so, in North Africa. So, so, it was a poor harvest again, in Spain. It was the cost of oil and the cost. No, I didn't say everything, but what I said is that is the vast majority. So, and you're looking for a needle in a haystack so, right now. So Brexit, when the so Brexit, overwhelming cause of rising food costs is nothing to do with leaving the EU. But it has added 6%. It has added 6% to food prices, according to the Bank of England. Now, they are a body of economists. Neither of us sitting here are economists. So as far as the best mi- minds of the economy in the, in the country, they are saying it's increased fi- food prices by 6%. And right now, low-income families are skipping meals to keep their food, ke- food their kids fed. That is what you... Mem- former MEP of the Brexit Party have done to them. You say that Bre- Brexit, that uh, being in the EU suppressed wages through immigration. Of course well, it did. Well, hugely. Here, here's the thing. Right now we've got major sh- major labour shortages acro- across the country. Our economy is desperately crying out for workers. For, for workers. So if we know that immigration and em- people from other countries are a net benefit to our economy, and we know that because the study, uh, because hang on, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. If we know that they contribute more in tax because they statistically were more likely to be in work because they come here that's to work true. than than the, the that's than not Brexit. true. The OBR actually said that the um that the, the incoming migrants at the moment have no greater <laughs> engagement in the labour market <laughs> than the domestic population. And actually, what there, there, mass there, there migration there go, there, does, and we're looking at figures of over six hundred thousand, it drives up food prices. No, it drives up price prices. No, I'm making a very salient point that you don't want to listen to. So no, no, no. I was I was making a point. I was making a point. 
So, the, as, as for the OBR, they said the most recent, i.e. the post-Brexit immigration is less beneficial to our economy than the pre-Brexit right. immigration. That's what you've done. No, but... As, 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 as for that's wage, not what wage, I've done. That's utterly mad. As, I'm as, not running the government's you, immigration the policy. Party. And if I was, I would party. certainly have the numbers far <laughs> lower than they are now. I don't uh, see okay. what that's so, got so, anything so, so, so to let me, do let with me. Fin- that's let me fin- ridiculous. Let me finish my point. Let me finish my point. Please don't interrupt. Wage suppression. You say people coming here. We know that they're a net benefit to our economy because they're more they're, like, they're more likely to be in work than people than people coming. Not that true. Is what the, that is what the OBR said. That's they said not it, what the OBR said. They, they, they said, said it, the opposite. They said, it, they said, they said pri- prior to Brexit, people coming here are more likely to be in the in the working age demographic than than people born here. But which is by definition, if you're if you're coming to, to another country, you're less likely. You're not likely to be either zero or ninety years old. That's just facts. No, hold on. You uh, might uh, be a spouse. You might uh, be a as, dependent. As, 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 for, as, for, as for wage suppression, if we know that immigration is a net benefit to our economy, which it, it is the responsibility of government to make sure that that, w- that benefit is shared equally across society by ensuring right, that workers have that. the ability to push for better wages, which is why people go on strike. And right now, the, the get Brexit done government is, cr- is clamping down on strikes. You have no interest in actually improving people's quality of life because you've made it worse at every stage. OK, so first of all, what I'd say is anybody who looks at a sensible immigration policy for any country to have realises there must be some degree of discernment. A system whereby you say these sectors are in need so we'll make sure we've got skilled workers to fill those th- those gaps in the jobs market. I think when people voted for Brexit with immigration as their primary choice, those people who focused on immigration simply wanted a system that reflected the needs of the nation, that was more bespoke so we could plan our infrastructure. Now, people always cite the fact that uh, mass immigration uplifts GDP. But what it actually does is decreases GDP per capita. It makes the money in people's pocket much lower because as a general rule, when you've got migrants coming in from other countries, they tend to be filling the lowest skilled jobs. And this has a downward spiral effect on the people in those jobs in the domestic workforce. And in terms of when you look at the the number of people coming in and you look at things like student spousal visas, and this has got nothing to do with Brexit. This is the immigration policy of this government, of which I'm not a member. Um, Actually, what you've now got is a situation where there's far more dependents and spouses than there are productive workers. Again, again, and this also that, adds, again, as you know, again, seven in ten go into again, the again, housing market, the again, private rental market. Again, that, that's, that's what, huge that's pressure what, that's on young people who will never get on the ha- How, That's not what I've done. But that's well, what the government well, of the no, day no, is doing yeah, by uh, not you know, having a you know, sensible immigration you know, policy. You know, you know, that's insane. <laughs> and actually, if we hadn't left the EU, the net migration figures that we've got right now, over 600,000, would be even higher, Femi. They'd be even higher. You're, you're trying to deny blame for this. And this is this is the main point I wanted to talk about today. You're trying to deny blame blame for this that it's the government that it's that you would have done it better. For starters, you were a member of the Brexit Party. Your official policy was a No Deal Brexit. That yeah. was your policy. Yeah. So all the all the non-tariff barriers, all the tariff barriers would have been ten times worse. We would not, have seen, we, we, not we, under WTO on, on WTO rules. We would have had to apply but actually, the, the, the EU would have had to apply the same standard tariffs to all UK products. That means and half of the stuff that we sell goes to the EU. That means that we've had half the stuff we sell does not go to the EU. Actually, as a member of the single market, this is the most wild thing you've said so far. As a member of the single market, the UK benefited the least. 92% of businesses don't even export to the EU. Actually, our annual growth as a member state of the EU was far lower than before we actually joined it. And in terms of exports to the EU, out of all EU member states, we were second from the bottom. We import so much more from the EU than we export to the EU. None of what you just said contradicts that what I said about about how half the stuff we sell goes to the EU. As far as fishing, it is. Half of all fish caught in the UK went to the EU. That would have meant tariffs on all fish going to the EU. That is what you would have done if you... So you can't... Co- come so that, you, that is... You can't, hold, so you, on, so, no, hold on. Let, let me, you're let there, me finish. You're there let, let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Would be. I don't interrupt you. you, you let, let, please let me finish. But you're saying mad stuff. Uh, no, is your policy was your policy not a no deal Brexit? Absolutely, yeah. and I can explain and, and, why the withdrawal and, 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 and agreement and is dreadful, Brexit and I would still stand by put, that. And a no deal Brexit would have forced the EU to put tariffs on UK products. Yes. Why would it? No, I don't think it would necessarily under, have done under, because actually, under, w, when it comes under WTO to, rules, act, yeah, yes, but it would. actually, it'd be in the EU's gift to not do that. Un, but and when they you wouldn't look be allowed at, to under WTO rules. But, yeah, but you can actually easily come up with a free trade agreement <laughs> between two parts. So that's not no deal. That's not no deal. That's not no deal. That's got a free trade agreement. It's very different from the withdrawal agreement that we currently have. No, you leave with no deal, and then you rebuild. You, you want 
after the No Deal basic, Brexit, yes, you, so, you on, leave on, with out, No out, Deal, not out, the withdrawal agreement out, that we've out, got, out, which out. is an absolute disaster. Out, out. The withdrawal agreement we've got is an absolute out. disaster. I can't out. stand it. Out. If you leave with No Deal and then go out. from the WTO out. prospectus, and then on top of that, you then work out a free trade agreement in a way that sectorally <laughs> benefits you, Sorry. as all other countries you're, you're, that trade with the EU basically in, do, Femi. Alex, you don't have to be Alex, a member of a political project Alex, to trade with it. Alex, this is insane. Your, your policy was a no deal. And when right. you point out how damaging that would be, you say no, but we'd have a deal. No deal. No, 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 no Femi, Femi. No Femi, deal is somehow Femi, a Femi. deal. It's, there's it's a vast genuinely difference. madness. Femi, there's what a you're vast doing difference. is madness. Femi, there's a vast difference between the withdrawal agreement that we've got, which aligns us with things that we should not be aligned to, such as essentially tax harmonisation, so we don't have what they call an aggressive tax, tax regime, which is what we fundamentally desperately need to attract business back. We shouldn't be any part of the EU state aid regulation as it currently stands. It's hugely punitive. Mm-hmm both for the EU's economy and ours. Um, and, and if we had left on a WT, WTO schedule and then worked to create a sector-by-sector sector FTA, which would have been done very quickly when you look at the statistics of what the EU import from us versus what they export to us, so it would have been very much in their, in, uh, in their interests, particularly in terms of fishing. We have the richest seas in all of Europe. The EU struggle to maintain a, a level of fish stock from their own waters to feed the hungry mouths okay, so, of people so, so, in Spain, so, so, for instance. So, 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 you know that I'll, as well I'll, I'll as make, I do. I'll make the point again that it is utter madness that you're defending no deal on the basis that it would mean somehow a deal. Uh, but the, but the, the main point here is you point out the problems with, uh, with Boris Johnson's deal. And I agree, Boris Johnson's deal. And I think is, we warned you. We warned you. But you, your your Brexit party, you actually stood down candidates in seats yeah. in, order, in, or, in, in, I, in, in, in order to help Boris Johnson get so, a deal. So, so and, and so let me, let me finish, let me finish. Mm-hmm. You lost the democratic argument on Brexit in 2019. Do you know how? Because you knew that the people in this country would rather stay in the EU than leave on Boris Johnson's terms. Yet you, you stood down candidates okay. to help Boris Johnson right. win and force us out of the EU on his terms. In fact, Nigel right. Farage even said that in a referendum between Boris Johnson's deal and Remain, quote, Remain wins that referendum and wins it every single time. You deliberately de- defy okay. the will of the but, British th- people. Thank you for putting words in my mouth. So first of all, I didn't agree with the standing down of candidates, um, but that well, happens in political did. parts. I know it did. And I went on the record at the time of saying I didn't agree with that. Secondly, I think a big part of the reason why we ended up with a deal that was such bad terms for us is because there was a fifth column in the parliament active actively trying to overthrow that democratic result. The madness and the pandemonium that was taking place in the UK Parliament, I think a lot of people felt like their backs were to the ropes and that it was a case of of actually making sure that Brexit even existed. Was Boris Johnson part of that fifth column? Well, it's debatable, isn't it? I don't know. You'd have to speak Sorry, to Boris had, about had, that. He had an eighty-seat majority. Whatever, which we gave him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. You, you gave Boris Johnson right. ultimate power to yeah. deliver a deal that you knew would be against the wishes of the British people. Now, it, I was fundamentally against that deal. A lot of my but, colleagues but, were. I think but, it was a case of holding, you but, know, but, holding your nose and having to do something. Again, because actually, Femi, I remember this. I remember that whole period keenly, as I'm sure do you. We were at a knife's edge where the Parliament of this country wanted to over turn that result it was a case of saying and I think Boris Johnson gave some pretty strong assurances by we'll leave with this deal and then I'll change it all well obviously Boris Johnson's been shot between the eyes right now so that's not going to happen is it although the deal does come up for renegotiation in 2025 and I would strongly urge politicians to sit down and look at it and listen to what the car manufacturers are saying look at things such as our corporation tax and not follow an eu schedule on that Ireland doesn't even follow any eu schedule on that to look at things like state aid so we're not tendering elements of vital national security such as the development of small modular reactors across the whole yeah. of europe when rolls royce are poised you, you, to go you, every, there are every, so everything, many everything, things everything that I'm we hearing. should be doing as a country with the tools of brexit that have frankly been denied and everything, that is the great tragedy everything i'm hearing is this is not the Brexit that we voted for. That's everything that I'm hearing from you. And yet we warned you for three years straight that you would not get the Brexit you voted for, that there needed to be some sort of democratic lock to make sure that whatever deal we ended up with with the EU was preferable to the um, preferable to remain, that people wanted it more than remaining in the EU. And clearly, everything you've said today shows that you failed on that, on that point. And the cost of that is that people in this country are poorer for it. The, the Small Business Federation said that businesses are suffering because of it. The um, the fishing fed, na- the National Federation of British Fi- Fishermen's Association said that Brexit said that the fishing in UK is on course to lose 300, 300 million pounds by 2026. That's what you've done. You've damaged the NHS according to the top medical charity in the UK. As as for musicians unable to tour, 
every sector of the UK economy worse during the worst cost of living crisis we've had since 1956. That is what you've done and you did it undemocratically knowing that people did not want it. Right, that's interesting, doing it undemocratically. What I would reply to that is actually, I agree with you in many respects, this is not the Brexit that I would have voted for at all. I think the withdrawal agreement is an utter farce and I think it really should be ripped up and we need to look at, uh, again, the sort of terms we want to be uh, trading and, and cooperating with the EU on. There have been huge success stories already from our independence and I think that when you look at politics, and I know you've never been a politician, I know you're not in a political party, so you might not understand what I would call real politic, which is you don't always get what you want straight away. A lot of politics is a long-term project. I would hope that there's enough people out there who still believe that this country are better off making decisions for themselves, that don't want to be part of a European Union that's actually looking at borrowing a trillion euros in total that we would be liable for if we were members. It would add to our national debt because we'd be part responsible for the, the interest repayments, uh, the interest and the repayments, who don't want to have an EU, be part of an EU that suddenly has agreed a record-breaking 300 billion euro budget where they dictate, even on matters of foreign policy, what their member states do. I still hope there are people out there in the country that realise that what they wanted is not being delivered, it is still being blocked, and they will continue to have faith in this country as the best determinant for our future. Not an electric bureaucrats in Berlamont, who have frankly also corrupt to the bone. You're still spewing rhetoric from 2016, even though the majority of people think Brexit is a mistake. That's I what that's what, uh, that's, oh, that's right, what we okay, are Okay, so, so, so well done for being Kantar and doing a survey of the whole population in your head on the spot. Oh, no, but, I actually, <laughs> frankly, don't agree with that.